Basically, I've painted all my life, probably for about 20 years now. I feel really passionate about it for lots of reasons, but mainly because it's so exciting to just get your hands dirty and get right into it. So I'm here today to talk about intuitive colour mixing. And for me, I'm going to share some little tips and secrets about how I would put together a canvas. What I particularly love about the Hydrocryl range, both in the basic range and in the Aboriginal range, is that the colours, even the most subdued, toned down sort of earth colours, have a real vibrancy to them. They have an, a complete brilliance about them. And it's, they're, they're quite luscious. I mean, they're, they're really delicious to use. And the luminosity is great when you start applying them to canvas. As you can see here, we're trying to colour match this canvas background here. So in this case, I would say that this um, Inca gold here one is very nicely close to it if you mix it down with a little bit of white. But the beige is also wonderful. So it really doesn't matter which of these that we start with, we can always get there eventually. So in this case, I'm going to use the beige um, and that's from the basic color range of hydrocryl paints. And I'm just going to put it down in a dry brush kind of fashion to start off with. Now you can either mix on the palette or you can mix on the canvas, of course. Um, and in this case, I'm just going to mix it straight on the canvas. I'm going to actually put some white there. It's so going to lighten it. Then I'm going to add a tiny bit of black because basically when you add black and white together, you're going to get a sense of grey. And what you're going to find is that at various points on that canvas, you've got different sort of versions of that colour going on in different places. Um, and that way you've got the shaded areas, you've got the, the highlight areas. Might even stick in a bit of blue because I'm just seeing a tiny tinge of blue. So you've got to be so careful and subtle with the amount of paint that you put in. It's very important, otherwise it very quickly tints it. You can probably see when I add blue into it, what's it what it's going to do is it's just going to shift that colour slightly, slightly to the more shadowy areas. If I just again hold it up here, you can see that very subtly you might find little hints of those kinds of colours. But again, the whole point is to be very loose and free with it and just trust your instincts. But you can see how fun it is to mix colour. It's actually really an adventure. It's about exploring the unknowns. And if something doesn't work, you just shift it. You just keep painting over and changing it. I'm going to mix the primrose yellow and white together. And primrose yellow is actually a nice cool yellow. It's a little bit similar to lemon yellow, but I find it quite an interesting one. It's got a really lovely brilliance to it. And as you can see that this one piece of canvas has got sort of yellowy bits in there too. So you can sort of, again, imagine into it all these different varieties that I'm just going to use to lay down my background colour. Okay, so that's kind of an interesting, hopefully, background to get started with. What I'm going to do now is throw in a bit of blue. And again, first of all, I'm just going to best find the colour out of these blues that will best approximate that blue. The closest ones I'd probably go for would be a mixture of these two colours. So we've got here cerulean blue on the one hand, and then we've got turquoise, which again is sort of shifting off blue, moving a little bit towards the greens. So it's got a bit more yellow in it, um, and it's quite a stunning colour in, in itself. I'm going to start with some white here. I'm just going to add the tiniest, tiniest amount of the lightest of the, the lighter of the two colours. In this case, it's the um, turquoise. find that's starting to get a bit close to what we're looking at. Okay, so that's the cerulean blue and then this time I'm going to add a little bit of one of the darker blues. Now in this case I think I'll choose um, the thallo blue, so just a little tiny bit of the thallo blue and I'm going to put it in here. So as you can see again it's just an approximation but you're starting to see something of what's in front of you, of trying to mix up that, that kind of a bluey colour. Okay, now for the fun part, we're going to look at the red range of Hydrocryl. And again, this is the basic range that they have. What I love about the reds is that they're so vibrant and brilliant. And because they're sing single pigmented, it means that you can really play around with them um, and mix other colours into them and they still retain their vibrancy even after lots of mixes. If I hold up these reds, again, I would tend to go for the warmer range of reds here 
So again, the mid-red would be a pretty good approximation. But again, you could pretty much start with any of these, probably any of these four reds to get to that tomato. Now looking at the pomegranate, again you can choose from any of these reds as a starting point. I think a nice cool red would work well, so I'm just going to start off with magenta as sort of a base colour. And I'm just going to map in just very roughly um, where I think that pomegranate is sitting in a very, very loose sense. So the raw umber, which is this one here. Let's put a little tiny bit, in fact that might work quite well for up here. Again with the transparent yellow oxide. So that's the combination of raw umber, transparent yellow oxide. But again, just starting to kind of creep that in around here and wherever I see little markings and things. This is the Inca Gold. This is actually part of the um, Aboriginal range, but I'm going to throw some of that in too. So what I've done is I've just very roughly put in the areas where I feel like there's certain shifts in colour, and then it's just about developing up from there. So it's actually just part of the process. And then the next step is I've actually just sort of started improvising a little bit and adding a bit of lemon yellow into it because I just felt that it would be nice. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. The most important thing is to just play, enjoy the process, explore colour and have fun.